You may be interested to know that the Wim Hof method uses a natural form of blood doping. So today I wanted to briefly talk about what that means, how it works, and how you can maybe use it to your advantage. So to, to start off, blood doping is essentially increasing the number of red blood cells that you have in circulation. It's common among cyclists, so common in fact that there's a whole Wikipedia page uh, dedicated to cases of, of, of doping and cycling. The, the way cyclists would do it is they would give themselves blood transfusions prior to a race so that they'd have more red blood cells circulating. And it works. Uh, red blood cells are the part of your blood that carry oxygen, and so by having more red blood cells in circulation, they were able to get better performance. But there's a natural form of blood doping which involves your spleen. So you may or may not be acquainted with what your spleen does. Your, your spleen acts as a blood filter and also it acts as blood storage. It, depending on who you listen to, it, it stores somewhere between uh, 10 and 25-ish percent of, of your body's red blood cells. In the case of seals and horses, 50% of their red blood cells are stored in their in their spleen when they're when they're not needed. That helps keep their blood blood thinner, so their heart doesn't have to work as hard. And then it allows them to tap into that reservoir of red blood cells when they need it. In a seal, when they dive deep underwater, you have to hold their breath for 45 minutes or so. Or in the case of horses, when they're racing, the spleen contracts and empties red blood cells into the system, giving them more endurance. There are a couple of things that can cause your spleen to contract and dump red blood cells into your system. One of them is strenuous exercise. Another one is hypoxia or lack of oxygen. So a study was done to find out the impact of hypoxia on, on spleen volume. So what they did is they had a, a group of volunteers breathe uh, regular air for 20 minutes and then high elevation air for 20 minutes. Basically, it had about as much oxygen as you'd expect to find at 13,000 feet. During the high altitude breathing exercise, their spleen volume reduced by about 18% and they got a, a, a boost in hematocrit and hemoglobin of about 2%. Now, a second group wanted to find out if exercise in conjunction with hypoxia would have an increased effect on the spleen and so they had a they conducted a similar experiment. Instead of being at 13,000 feet, they simulated about 11,500. But they also had the participants do exercise. And, and, and when the participants did exercise, they found that the spleen reduced by an average of 33%. In other words, they released about 33% of their stored red blood cells into, into the body. So how long does it last? Well, in the first experiment, they found that pretty much everything, hematocrit, hemoglobin, had returned to normal within about 10 minutes. And so it doesn't buy you a really long window. It gives you about a 10 minute window. Patrick McKeown, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, but he's the author of the book, Oxygen Advantage, which is an excellent resource if you want to learn about this type of stuff. He, he released a video talking about how um, breath holding can act as a form of blood doping, albeit for a relatively short period of time. So if you think about the Wim Hof method, how he has you hold your breath for two or three times and then during your final breath hold you blow out all your air and then do as many push-ups as you can essentially what you're doing is push-ups while blood doping that's why you're able to do more push-ups than you normally would be able to is because you're circulating more hemoglobin so perhaps it would be beneficial to do a few rounds of breath holding immediately before a 400 yard race or some other strenuous athletic event uh, that depends on your endurance that's about all I have, although there's, I was tempted to go into another topic. There's, turns out that if you get injured, you know, your, your spleen can, you know, spleen cells can travel to different parts of the body and about one in five or one in six people has multiple spleens because an injury caused you know, cells to, to regenerate another part of the body. Kind of a weird thing. Didn't want to go into it too much today, but it's out there. And that's all I have for today. Click like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.